Welcome, I am John Lira, and in this demo, I will talk about denormalizing the data. What you see here on the screen is the prior demo on normalizing data, and I want to show you a couple of things and tie these two concepts together. To normalize data, which basically means from one record, break it up into more than one, and you can review the prior demo to see how the data was and how and why we use the normalizer. But here's the normalizer. There is one thing I wanted to add because it's going to come up here in the concept of denormalizing data is notice we have two targets. There's a question here. Does it matter which one gets loaded first? Well, we never brought that concept up because in the prior demo I mentioned that in fact here there was no physical primary key or foreign key. So also, also, well that's primarily it, that there's really no constraints in, put on, on how we're going to write that. I feel that in real life we probably do want to put the master table first, the records into the master, followed by the children. In another demo, I do talk about constraint base loading where we do want to enforce that. So here I did not forget it, I disregarded it because in this demo, to keep focus on the normalizer, my target tables did not have a foreign key and primary key relationship. But in a separate demo called constraint based loading, I will show you that. Now, with the normalizer, we break it up into several records into different targets. In the, in the, uh, in the denormalizer, I'm going to use, and I already have it open here, and I'm going to show you the complete solution. Notice the real important part is the bottom and the secret transformation is the one that you already are familiar with, the aggregator. So in here, notice the customer table from the normalization exercise, the demo. We're going to read it back in and simply store it out to another target. So that's, that's that one, that's the customer table. However, the product table, we're going to read it in and in this case, we are going to, and you can see by the target, notice that we have customer key, purchase ID, and then the items. So let me just open up the target tables. So again, you should review these two demos side by side, the normalizer and the denormalizer. So here we're going to reverse the process. We're going to read the customer and mainly at this point put it into this uh, target table. And this one here is read up the product using the aggregator and what we want is to denormalize data. In other words, create it back into one big record. And how do we do that? I'll just show you the secret. This is the aggregator. Notice you have your ports and notice the secret is really in combining this almost, almost as if you're traversing an array. You're using the function call first and based on your coding you're going to get the item, the purchase, and etc. So you're basically traversing the first, the second, and the third so you can combine them all together. That's what the purpose of the first is and then you actually take it into the target. Now the function we're using is called the first so let me just quickly go to the default functions, select it, and here it is. Returns the first non-null value of an expression. And so that's, that's it. That's all we're doing. Okay, so the trick is there already. Now, the question com comes up again. So that, that's it for the denormalizer. Now the question comes, up, comes back again. Are we going to be concerned in how we're going to load the tables? Well, if there's a relationship, then we should. Notice this is called a fact table and a dimension table. So is there a sense of relationship? Now, again, we see that we have relationships, but are these only virtual relationships, in other words, only in Power Center, or do they really exist in the database? If they really exist in the database, then we really do have to tell the ETL engine, the integration service, which source pipeline to read together. Now, notice, this is still not the same as constraint-based loading. Why? Because I have different pipelines. I could have written this in two separate mappings and then have a session run the first one, and then have a session run the second one. So two separate mappings, two sessions, and then in the workflow, I could have, I could have designed the workflow to see which one comes first. Okay, now what now, so we're not dealing with constraint-based loading yet, 
So if you, look, if you look under mappings, you see the target load plan. This is what controls it. Since they are, since they are different source pipelines, they're not connected to one source to two targets. They're different pipelines, which means they could be in separate mappings. You decide which is the order. So notice the first one is the ODS31 customer, and the second one is the fact. So notice that you have to sort of and intuit what this is. So the first one is the dimension and the second. So in this, in this case, when we execute this, the, let me cancel out, the pipeline, the first pipeline, is what's going to be executed first and then the second. If you wanted to reverse it, then you ba basically select it and select and move it up and notice it changes. It. So the picture does not change. Notice I just, I just changed it, but the picture doesn't change. However, at runtime, the integration service will look at this and decide which one goes first based on the mapping target low plan. So let me bring this back correctly. That's what I wanted, first customer and then product. Okay, so that concludes this demo on, the, on how to denormalize data using the aggregator transformation. And thank you.